Hello and welcome to a new episode on what does this data say. I am Ajay Prakash. I continue my analysis of the crash of Air India flight 171 which happened on June 12, 2025. Now I continue analyzing the data from flight radar 24 in this episode also. However, this episode that is episode number 223 may be treated as a rejoinder to my last episode which was um, this one episode 222 where i had mentioned that the data reveals actually what happened and the pilots did not get enough time to react to the problem i had taken data from flight radar 24 and then showed you all that analysis Quite a few of the viewers had an objection saying that flight radar 24 data which I had shown for the June 12th uh, Air India 171 flight which had crashed was incorrect and that flight radar 24 had later corrected the data and had shown that the flight had used the entire runway at Ahmedabad airport which is 300, three and a half kilometers wrong. Now, there were similar objections from many people and to the extent that someone mentioned that uh, he had wasted 16 minutes looking at my video. And then there was also an issue of why there was a dust cloud at the end of the runway and why did the flight AI-171 on that day, if it used the entire length of the runway, which is three and a half kilometers, why did it take off right at the end of that runway? So those of you who have seen my last episode, episode number 222, for them it will be easy to follow what I am presenting in this episode. However, those of you who are joining new in this episode, don't worry, I am going to give a very brief uh, summary of what I said in that episode. I am going to dig into some more data today and try to answer this question that did Air India Flight 171 use the full length of the runway on June 12, 2025 while taking off from Ahmedabad airport. The full length of the runway at Ahmedabad is three and a half kilometers. For this purpose, I am going to use the data which has been revised by Flight Radar 24, which many of you have pointed out, and see what really can be answered in this regard. And also, from the same data, we'll try to see why do we see that cloud of dust at the end of the runway when the plane gets airborne. So here's a quick recap of my previous episode. In that episode, what I have done is I have taken data from Flight Radar 24 from June 9th for the Air India Flight 171, the same flight which crashed on June 12th. So June 9th, June 10th, June 11th and June 12th and I have compared their trajectory while they were taking off at Ahmedabad airport. The idea was to compare the same flight, that is Air India Flight 171, that how it performed on June 9th, 10th, 11th, and then compare it with the flight which crashed and see if we can identify any anomaly, any pattern, anything out of the normal. So here is the ground trajectories of June 9th and 10th. You can see that the aircraft came out from the taxiway and then backtracked uh, a little bit before it took off. The, the same thing happened on June 10th, the same thing happened on June 11th, and the data which I had shown for June 12th did not show the aircraft backtracking. And now that was pointed out my, by many viewers that this is wrong and Flight Radar 24 had later corrected it. So I had plotted the results in this table and then the June 12th flight did show some anomalies. I had that time assessed that it had used only a part of the runway. This I am going to now show you what could have been the possible length of the runway that it used. The other things were not uh, out of the normal. Its takeoff speed was 174 knots, a little slower than the previous day's flight. And then the uh, the vertical speed was the main cause of concern. 
the aircraft did not get the required lift when it was at the end of the runway. You can see here that the vertical lift of this flight was only 896 feet per minute and that's about half of what the other flights had shown in the previous days. Now this news that Air India 171 had exhausted three and a half kilometer of runway before takeoff point indicating no thrust this story was published in several uh, newspapers. I'm showing you uh, right now the Financial Express of June 19. Now, this uh, paper then further quoted that this story was received from Times of India. And Times of India goes on to say that uh, this information was given to them by top officials of uh, Ahmedabad Airport. Top officials said the jet nearly exhausted three and a half kilometer of runway at Sadar Vallabhai Patel International Airport longer than the usual two and a half to three kilometers needed for a wide body jet. Now did flight radar 24 state that flight AI-171 used the full runway? Well it did in one of its posts on June 12th which I am showing you right now on your screen. There is a paragraph here which says the full length of runway 23 at Ahmedabad was used. We are continuing to process data from receiver sources individually. Additional processing confirms that AI-171 departed using the full length of the runway at Ahmedabad. Runway 23 is 11,499 feet long. That's about 3 and a half kilometer the aircraft backtracked to the end of the runway before beginning its takeoff roll and then they show you uh, this uh, picture here the arrow drawn here is not from the flight radar data this has been superimposed on the image now that's the only one place where flight radar says that uh, the full length of the runway was used now the very next day Flight radar puts up a tweet on X and it says we were able to process a limited number of additional ADSB data frames and our calculations of above ground level for Air India flight AI-171 are now available at this uh, blog. I'll show you that blog but the complete arrow which was there a day ago was missing. It only shows you half the runway and it shows the direction of travel. The reference of the blog which has been given in the tweet, that's what I'm showing you right now here. Now there's um, this uh, graph here which shows the additional ADSB points which have been determined. I'll, I'll show you the entire track later on Google Maps. So there's a lot many points you see at the tarmac and while the aircraft is taxiing and then it's a holding short of the runway because when there was an incoming flight I think from Chandigarh it waited for that to land and then it uh, proceeded. Now the reason why I'm pointing this out is in the additional data which flight radar has given out there is not a single data which shows that the flight had backtracked or gone up to the end of the runway. The end of the runway point is here. There is no point in this uh, part of the runway. And there are many more points at the end of the runway when the aircraft was just about to take off. And then in the same blog, uh, they have given a link from where we can download uh, the device data of flight radar 24 and that's where i have got uh, the data from now what i'm going to further show you is that the data from flight radar 24 the revised data does not show that the aircraft went up to the end of the runway it doesn't show it used three and a half kilometers of runway but yes there is some missing data from which we can deduce or uh, try to analyze that the aircraft did backtrack a little bit. So that's what I'm going to show you and then further I'm going to show you 
the additional points, uh, data points with, which were received at the end of the runway, which would also give you some clues about AI-171 at the time of liftoff. Now, here is the plot of AI-171, the data from flight radar, the, where they have updated the, the, their data with more ADSB points. And now you can see the additional data points, how the aircraft was pushed back, then it taxied all the way here, and then it was stationary for quite a while. You'll find a huge number of points at, at this, um, this point when the aircraft was stationary and it was waiting for an Indigo flight to land. And then the aircraft uh, pushed forward, it came on the runway, and that's where uh, flight uh, radar does not provide any data point in this stretch of the runway. So from that data, you can't make out whether it went back or not. But then there are additional data points at the takeoff point. This point, the first point here is when the aircraft reached a height of 500 feet. And then there are uh, five, six more points. We'll analyze this later. One more thing I want to show you before I come to my final conclusion. Now, this is the flight of June 9th AI-171. It was a normal flight. You can see the ADSB data points all over here. As the aircraft was pushed back, then it did the same taxi. It took the same taxiing route as the June 12th flight came over here. And then it backtracked. You can see these points, the aircraft going up to this point, and probably from there it turned and then did a takeoff. Now, uh, I'm going to use um, June 9th flight for comparison using these two points the point where it enters the runway and the first point when the aircraft is airborne. And I'm going to use these timestamps and show you something quite interesting. Now, this table, what I'm showing you here, is should put to rest uh, the question of how much runway was used by AI-171 on June 12th. Did it use the full runway or did it not? Now, I am comparing uh, the some timestamps of the flight of uh, June 9th and June 12th. I have taken the time the aircraft enters the runway, then to the time it takes to get airborne. Now on June 9th, this was roughly four minutes. And uh, as we see from the data, it used about 2.4 kilometers of the runway. That is 2.4 kilometers was available to the aircraft when it started its takeoff run. On June 12th, we have the same timestamps time the aircraft entered the runway and the time it got airborne. This is roughly around four and a half minutes. Therefore, I assume that the aircraft backtracked to about the same distance as the June 9th flight. In no way in four minutes, this aircraft could have gone to the other end of the runway, which was another one and a half kilometers down the line, turned and then uh, made the takeoff run. So AI-171, according to me, did a backtrack. It went back about the usual length, which other aircraft had been doing in the past. And then there are a few people who have expressed their doubt, saying that the aircraft, like a Dreamliner, cannot turn at the in the middle of the runway as the width is not enough. Just to clarify, Ahmedabad Airport does have a point at about two and a half kilometers from the end where the aircraft can make a U-turn. I'm just showing this image. You can go to Google Maps and see it uh, for yourself. And um, if you measure the distance of this point where the aircraft turn, that is around two and a half kilometers from the edge of the runway. Now, in this last section, let's try to see if we can explain why that cloud of dust took place when the aircraft was uh, just getting airborne. Now, these are the last seven data points which I received from flight data uh, 
uh, Flight Radar 24 in their revised uh, data file. Now, you can uh, try to make out the alignment of these points. The, if I draw a straight line, it sort of veers to the left. Now, this uh, is only if uh, the accuracy of flight radar data is very good. If it's not accurate, then probably this explanation may not hold good. Now, uh, the Ahmedabad Airport runway width is 45 meters, while a Boeing 787-8, uh, the wingspan is 60 meters. So if I were to now superimpose the aircraft on these data points, you would see that the aircraft is not on the center line. It's towards the left. And as it goes further, it, the tendency is to move towards the left. And at the last point, the engine is almost above the ground, which is next to the runway. So my explanation could be that if this data is true and the aircraft was going towards the left, as it took off, it could have uh, blown up the dust below it. So that's all the data, folks, and I hope I have been able to clarify a few issues that were raised on my last uh, episode. Uh, it's for us now to make a judgment. The experts have to come in and tell us what happened. But I still believe somewhere that the pilots did not get enough time to react. Whatever happened to the aircraft that day happened after it started its takeoff run. Thank you for watching.